Okay, Breaker Broke 23. So, tonight is the unboxing uh, episode 3 uh, video that we're going to do. And um, we're going to unbox a uh, base station or two and maybe some mobiles. I need to get some mobiles up on that top shelf up there. So, um, yeah. So, we're going to see what's going on with those. And, let's see if I can do this without messing up. Put this in my fancy schmancy tripod. Nice. All right. So here's what we got here. Um, where's my Nike knife? All right. I have marked some of these boxes. Some of these boxes are mismarked because they are from um, previous moves. But that being said, I want to get a base station or two. Uh, some of the heavy stuff, so I'm grabbing heavy boxes at the moment, and I want to put those on the bottom shelf. So, um, I don't really remember what I boxed in a lot of these, and some, of, like I say, some of them are marked and some of them are not marked. And it was just because when I was moving, I was in such a hurry, we just had to get stuff done. And I did this in June and July of um, 2019. So, my memory's a little off here. So, let's see what we got here. Oh, ding, 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 ding. Oh, sweet, dude. This is my car stereo, what I used to call my cookbook. Um, this is what I have all of my speaker plans in. Um, Eight-inch single driver band pass, stuff like that. Um, these are speaker designs that I did, uh, single 10-inch uh, band pass, dual band passes. These are like triple chamber single reflex band passes and stuff. And these, this is my cookbook. This is tried and true designs here. So GNS Redline, I was a GNS Redline dealer back in the day. That's kind of cool. It really means nothing to you guys. Oh, wow, man, I was just throwing stuff in boxes. My um, Jags That Run S10 swap manual. Um, Father's Day card, that's awesome. Uh, Royce meter, so I used to collect meters, and I think everybody's got to start collecting somewhere. And meters are usually pretty cheap, so this is kind of a cool Royce meter. And I use this for signal strength, actually. This one made a great signal strength meter. I had this sitting on my test bench in my shack, so I could see if I had signal coming on into my shack, which was kind of cool. And some cheapy, crappy audio pipe, six and a half inch speakers. So, throw those away. Ah, here we go. We finally have a CD. Okay, so I have protective padding there. What the hell is this? It's to a Nintendo. What? Another Nintendo RF converter. Really? Oh man, this smells musty. This smells like Washington State. Man. Oh, good lord and a quarter. Ooh, 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 I feel nauseous. So this is the front of the radio. And let's just kind of... Oh my gosh. I was going to throw that box on the ground. I'm glad I didn't because my dad gave me a couple of these little instruments. This is from uh, World War II. And this is a clock um, that would be in the cockpit of, um, of a plane, right? And I don't know what cockpit or what plane, but this, I believe, had the um, that glow-in-the-darks paint on it, the, the cancer-causing stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, it does work, the last time I tried it, anyway. But it doesn't keep time very well. you got to re uh, readjust it every... I think it was like every day, or every other day. Oh, this looks familiar. And... My Golden Eagle Mark III. The transmitter. Okay, that's cool. So, this radio goes back a long ways. This is... This radio is actually what got me started in collecting. Um, and what it was is... When... I first bought my truck. I bought my truck when I was 17, and the very first road trip, 
And I lived in Salt Lake City at the time. The very first road trip that I took was down to a little area called Springville, Utah. Oh, wow, look at one of the little feeties that's falling off. Okay, Springville, Utah, um, which is X amount of miles. I want to say 40 or 60 miles south of Salt Lake City. So I was 17 years old at the time. 16 or 17? 17 years old at the time. And this guy got a hold of me on the radio, and he's like, Hey, weak one, which was my handle back then. We all have stupid handles, right? Hey, one of my dumbest handles was Index Kid. That was like my handle when I was like 11, which is really dumb. I have no idea how I got that. But anyway, he's like, hey, weak one. Um, you know, I know where there's one of those Browning Golden Eagle Mark III's. And the guy's got it for sale. And he's like, um, how much? I, I said, how much do you want for it? He says, like, 350 bucks. I got the Mark III's. I got the stock banana mic to this, the Electro Voice banana mic, and then I got a, a Glenn Digital VFO. It was a Glenn 326B, and they're worth a whole lot of money right now, but they're garbage. They drift around a lot. They're okay for AM, kind of, once they get warmed up. Can't use them on sideband. You could literally blow on it, and you just start drifting off frequency. So I got the, the, the set of the Eagles. Um, the factory banana mic, which is worth some Skrilla. I got the uh, the Glenn 326. I believe I got a D104 with this too. Anyway, so I drove down, picked all this stuff up from this really cool old guy, and he was a farmer down there. And then, um, yeah, I drove home. And I used to use this every day. I never turned this radio off. I actually turned it on, and I left it on for like over a year without turning it off. The only problem was, this thing was really clean, but the only problem was, is he put a high-low switch in here, which was really dumb. And so like on low position, the radio did 3 watts. On high position, the radio did maybe 6 watts. On the back, and I don't know if it's still there or not, no, okay. On the back... No, I'm sorry, it was on the receiver. On the back of the receiver, they cut a little hole in here and put like this giant old toggle switch in there. And it was to extend the eagle ping so you could sit and go rear, 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 rear with it. And, you know, that was kind of a big thing back in the day, was to like extend it. I remember hearing, I remember hearing the guys on Channel 6 with their banana mice, they go rear, and they'd be like, yeah, yeah, roger, roger, right on. And then here's a tag that I need to put back on it. All right, that's cool. So I got to work on that. I got to work on all this stuff, actually. So we'll put the meter to the side because that's kind of worthless. I can't believe this. Look at this. My, my kids must have helped pack this stuff up. All right, on to the next one. Let's see. What should we do next? I got to do some mobiles. So let's do a mobile. Um, blah, 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 blah. We're going to do this one. Okay, so as I've told you folks, that I don't really like AM-only radios. I really don't. I, I just never have since I was a young lad. I always thought that buying an AM radio, you were just basically buying half of a radio, right? So, most all of my uh, mobiles especially are single sideband. So... Yeah, I, I love um, prior, free priority mail shipping stuff for packing. I think it's great. And this puppy's double box, so I must have thought a lot of this radio. I don't know why. We have a little bit of padding down here at the bottom. We got some fruit snacks here. And these are Kirkland, so you know they're going to be good, right? Kirkland fruit snacks. Snacks, smacks, stacks. And good lord. What did I do here? Man, have you guys ever moved? And then it's just, just like, you just like go crazy. Oh, oh, I can even smell it. Oh, man. I know what radio this is. I can tell by just the smell. Hmm. Sweet, boys and girls. Nice. Look at that. So, the old Midland Mobile, because I don't have my glasses on. I think that was, uh, what was this? This is a 79 
This is a 79-893, right? And this is a 40 channel, single sideband. Um, I thought it was Uniden, but it doesn't have a Uniden plug. It has like a CyberNet type plug in there, and I don't remember. And I do have the bracket for it. But yeah, um, neat sideband radio. Um, not the best receiver in the world. And unfortunately, the faceplate is a little pitted, but I've had this for 20 years, and I do use it every once in a while, so I'll bring this out and flex its muscles. Neat little radio for kind of a retro night, so we'll throw that on a top shelf here, just kind of randomly. And let's see, let's do another base station. This box was heavy, and I need to get the heavy stuff down below. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was picking this up, I saw chrome. Ooh, I see chrome again. So, on the box, it's marked Radio B. Radio B. I have no idea what that is, but I think I know what those silver sides are. So, you guys want to take a guess. You may or may not be right. And, because it's pretty heavy. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. Right on. All right, well... How am I going to do this? Let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Palomar Skipper. And the tag is missing. So help me, guys. I don't know. Remember the... Where does the nameplate go? Right here? No. Wait. Where was the nameplate? For? Oh, it was on the speaker. Um, okay. I've owned a few of these. I've owned like three of these. And um, I believe this is Skipper 71. But, um, yeah, I'll have to try to find the tag for it. Anyway, so, 23 channel, crystal controlled, upper, lower, sideband, and AM. Not really a performing radio. In fact, I really am not going to keep them. I don't think. I don't know. I got this, and I probably will, because I got this from a good buddy of mine, Lowell. Um, Mystic Traveler here in Salt Lake City, otherwise called the Forest Dweller. And this one's, you know, the top's in pretty good condition. It's not really scraped up. So I just need to power these up, go through them. Um, they're, you know, they're a really pretty radio, but they don't perform all that well. Uh, Sideband radios of this vintage just never really did perform very well. And I know people are going to be like, yeah, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, yes, I do. So, oh, look at this. Oh, God. Here's a TBI monster and a half. Skipper 300. So, I don't know if you guys know about these things or not, but they got like sweep tubes. I think they're like uh, 8950s, I believe. Um, really super spendy stuff. Hard to get a hold of right now, as far as I know of. Um, I really haven't honestly checked in quite a while, but I owned a couple of these. In fact, I had one of these that I ran on my Mark III for a while, my, the Browning I just unboxed. And I'll tell you what, man, I got into every neighbor's TV for like, I don't know, like three houses surrounding my house. My neighbors really knew when I had this puppy cranked up. So, um, they're really pretty. Um, I think this is one that I had from back in the early, early 80s. And what I did is I sold this to a friend. Because um, he was collecting skippers. He had like a whole train of these things, like a whole bunch of them. And I'm just like, yeah, I don't want them because the amp is dirty. The radios are fair to marginal on AM. They, they work on AM, but terrible on single sideband. Um, and I just wasn't into Palomars back in the day um, after I used them. So I sold this. Either I sold it or I traded it to my buddy for something, maybe some Tweety Birds or something. I think I only sold it for like 50 bucks. And um, yeah... And so anyway, I ended up getting this back from Forest Water. I believe this is one of my old original ones. I also had one of these when I lived in Washington that I sold to Catbox, I believe. And it had the copper. It was a, it was a, a the chassis of it was like a copper color. So that was kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, it's got all the tubes in it and everything. This thing weighs like 25 pounds. And... The, the transmitter here weighs, look, I mean, it's pretty nice chrome, you know? And I think the transmitter weighs about um, 
10, maybe, maybe 10 pounds. So we'll put those next to the screaming beagle, is what I used to call those. The screaming eagle. And um, sorry this video is long, you guys. If you guys want me to make shorter videos, I'll just do shorter videos and then I'll just do more of them. Or I can do a little bit longer videos and do less. So I don't know. You guys tell me. So let's put that little sucker over there. I need to find the receiver uh, for the... Um, for the Browning, the Screaming Beagle. Um, oh, I know what I was going to show you guys. So this is going to be not really a surprise. So my my wife bought this for me. So you know I I should tell you guys this story, but um, not in this video. But I met my wife on the CB, and it was totally by accident. But we just did. So uh, that was about about 1982 or 83. But for my birthday in 1993. A static had this uh, going on, and it was the Static Diamond Eagle. And I also believe they had the the uh, Black Knight, or was it the Black Eagle? It, oh God, but ugly! It was like black and had a uh, fake gold um, uh, grill on it. But my wife bought me this for my birthday, 1992 or three. Maybe it was 93. She used to support my my habit. Um, this is a diamond eagle, and I've literally talked on this thing maybe hmm, a dozen times ever. I wish I kept better. I wish I took better care of this. This is the uh, the uh, certificate of authenticity because um, I don't know. This was like their remake or or something to make up for the golden eagle, I believe. Because uh, remember the, the D-104 Gold Eagles? Golden Eagles? So what they wanted to do was just kind of a... Yeah. Kind of a, I guess, newer version of that. So we'll wrap up this video with this right here. This is a really cool rig. It's beautiful. I really hate touching it, honestly. But... A static. It's a six-wire mic. Came with a little plate that you can screw right there, and what you do is you get it engraved with your handle or your unit number. I never did do that. And we have the little diamond. And there's the dates. Commemorative. So it was 93. Okay, cool. My how the years just, you, you lose track of them, right? Nothing up top there. But yeah. This was the, this was the first a static lollipop that I ever had with the push to talk bar. All of my other ones, because I was a poor kid, right? All of my other ones were chicken chokers. And um, man, oh man, oh man, did I have a Woody to get one of these. And my wife is like, oh, you want one of those really? I'm like, yeah, okay. I have, I don't know where that little plate is. I do have it, I did see it. Ah, there it is. Oh, it's hard to do with one hand. Thanks for putting up with me, guys. Oh, that's not it. Mmm. I'm going to have to find my plate. I know I have it. I, I have seen it because it's like a, a really important deal. I have this set up for Four Wire Cobra. It sounds pretty good. People say it sounds great. It is a beautiful microphone, though, isn't it? All right. So that is the Aesthetic Diamond Eagle Limited Edition. 1933 to 1993. All right, you guys. Thanks for watching episode three in the mass unboxing here. I may or may not need some more shelf space. Maritron AL811. Eesh. And then we're going to start that top shelf for mobiles, bases. Maybe I'll just put tube stuff here. I really appreciate you guys sticking with me. And hey, down below at the bottom of each video, go to my store and pick up your very own social networking version 1.0 coffee mug. This means a lot to me actually because, you know, if you're old like I am, I'm going to be 56 here in like uh, 12 days. And 
you know, back in the day, this is what we did. This was our social networking, you young guys. You know, that we didn't have the computers, you know. Well, maybe we did, but they were nerds and didn't have the interweb. Uh, did Al Gore invent that yet? No, I don't remember. But anyway, um, so this was social networking for real. I mean, there were hundreds of base stations on uh, in the Salt Lake Valley, and we uh, would just talk to each other and meet each other. And remember coffee breaks? I mean, weren't coffee breaks awesome? So I'm like, you know, I was telling my daughter one day, I was like, you guys and your computers, you know, um, we had social networking as well. And they were the, you know, this is the original version of social networking. Well, I guess maybe the, the advent of the telephone was social networking too. But anyway, to, a, to an extent. So anyway, this is on my Teespring store. You can pick one of these overpriced coffee mugs up. I actually use them. I love them. Little lemon ice water there. And um, I forgot what they're charging for them. But I make like a buck fifty off each cup. And that goes to help support my radio habit which is still out of control. And we're just starting, boys and girls. Hang on, because uh, we've just basically started this ride. Thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up. Please like or subscribe. Over and out.